Hello, hello, and welcome to my power leveling guide from levels 1 to 80 in Final Fantasy XIV for patch 5.5 and beyond. If you are anything like me, you've most likely spent majority of your playtime on a single job class pretending to master it, while in reality you're just too scared to try new things, or maybe you're too lazy to play low level content again, or you don't want to do job quests. Well, if you feel personally attacked by this statement, you've come to the right video. Or maybe you just really want the MR amount and have decided that now is a good time to level your alt jobs. Welcome. I'll be breaking this video down into four main parts, levels 1 to 50, levels 51 to 61, 61 to 71, and of course 71 to 80. The description will have chapters linked below, so feel free to click on the right level range so you can skip ahead and figure out how to get from your current level to where you want to go. I'll be making a few assumptions about you as a player. Number one, you have a level 80 combat job to benefit from the armory bonus from the start to the end of the torturous leveling journey for your side jobs. If you don't know what the armory bonus is, you basically get a significant experience boost while playing a job that's below your highest level job, meaning that if you're level 80, all of your jobs below level 80 will receive the experience boost. Number two, you have enough brain cells to rub together to always be equipping the right experience gain items, such as the ring, the friendship headband thingy, and the earrings if you're lucky enough to have them. And number three, I'll assume that by now you have figured out that the heat of battle buff from your FC and the squadron battle manual do not in fact stack. As long as you have one of them active, you're good to go. And do yourself the favor and always, always, always have a food buff running. 3% of your entire 1 to 80 leveling journey adds up to a whopping 9.7 million experience. To give you context, 9.7 million experience is more than what you need from the entirety of level 1 to 50. So always have a food buff active, you can get very cheap food everywhere. It's You just, you just buy it, go to the gold saucer and buy eggs if you have to have a food buff rolling. Now if you are starting at level 1, you have a variety of options to get the leveling process started. By far the absolute fastest way to get from levels 1 to 20 is to have a friend do the so-called boosting method. This can be done in a variety of locations. Anywhere where mobs are level 60 or close to level 60, they prefer to attack in melee range and they can be one shot by a level 80 combat job. I prefer doing this on the Clockwork Engineers and Paladins, as you can see on the screen right now. I'll also put the coordinates up, but this is just outside the Helix Etherite in the Heavensward regions. All I'm doing here is I'm hitting the enemies with a single attack, and then my friend Autumn comes in and she one-shots them with her level 80 Dancer. That's all we're doing. We're not in the same party together, so this way all the experience is attributed to me. This is very fast, it took us roughly 15 minutes to go from level 1 to 16, which unlocks some of the first dungeons, and which unlocks leveling roulette. Now if you do not have any friends to do this with, then I first recommend you make some friends, which I know is easier said than done. In the case you don't have any friends, and have no intent to make any, I recommend you advertise in Party Finder. Put up a party finder saying you're willing to pay someone 20,000 gil to spend 20 minutes with you killing these enemies. If you are broke and you are still leveling from 1 onwards, then you gotta do it the hard way. Go do your level 1, level 5, level 10 job quest. Go do the hunting log. Go do some fates. Go do some random side quests in Gridania or something. But um, the fastest way to do this is to just have someone do it with you. And now that we've unlocked your first leveling roulette, let's also talk about the other roulettes. Now is a good time to do so. First of all, the roulettes you want to be doing whenever you can, whenever your server time has reset, is leveling roulette, alliance raid roulette, level 50, 60, and 70 roulette, frontline PvP roulette. And on that note, you only have to do the frontline PvP roulette if you want to, or if it's peak time for PvP in your server. On my server, there's lots of times in the day where I can't find a frontline roulette, so I don't bother. I also personally prefer to avoid the main story quest roulette, because I'm not willing to spend 45 minutes of my day bored out of my goddamn mind, listening to Gaius prattle on about how this is not the intent, and then looking at Lahabrea's shitty laugh. The MSQ roulette is very valuable in terms of experience gain, past level 65, roughly, 
uh, it's hard to tell but um, if you are playing the roulette, get a nice YouTube video ready or you know watch something on Netflix because it is going to be quite boring. Now, the last point I want to make about roulettes is to check your server reset time. If you had to choose between doing your roulette at level 16 or level 26, you want to do it at level 26. The experience reward for the roulettes scales off the level that you're at when you do the roulette. So you get more experience overall at level 26 than you would at level 16. Now, for me, server time resets for the roulettes at 11 p.m., which makes it very convenient. So if I know, okay, my roulettes are resetting in an hour, I'll do them now. But if I also know I have six hours until reset, I'm going to spend some more time leveling before I do my roulettes so I can maximize the level of experience I gain. Okay, let's talk about levels 20 to 50. Now this leveling range is actually quite fast and it can be quite entertaining and very fun, especially as you're unlocking new skills all the time, you get to learn the new job. It's a, uh, it's a nice leveling range, trust me. This is the most entertaining and the most varied of the levels you're gonna have. If you're a DPS player, you have to spam dungeons with your grand company squadron. For some reason, not a lot of players know that the squadron is actually very good at clearing dungeons quickly and giving you a lot of experience. So the way I approach this is number one, I set my squadron to offensive mode. This gives my squadron significantly higher damage. In fact, I'm certain my squadron is doing more damage than the average player I meet in the duty finder. Also, queue times as a DPS player go into double digits often. So you could be spending 10 minutes or more just waiting for a dungeon queue to pop. Now this is 10 minutes you could have been spending inside a dungeon just killing enemies, getting experience, and uh, and progressing your leveling rather than just waiting for players to queue with you. So that's my recommended approach for a DPS player. Now it's a little bit finicky to learn how to use the squadron controls, but uh, once you do it a couple of times, you also learn how to pull more than just one or two packs of enemies, uh, basically by directing your squadron to attack whatever is closest. So um, that's my recommended approach for a DPS player. That's not to say that a tank or a healer can't do this as well. In fact, when I was leveling my healers, I was uh, I quite quickly realized that my squadron is also more efficient at clearing dungeons than some, you know, sprout groups. For reference, it took me over 18 minutes to clear uh, Brave Flux Hard with three sprouts, um, and it only took me 14 minutes with my squadron clearing every single mob along the way. So, if you're uh, not in the mood to play with other people then the squadron is perfect for you if you are playing a tank if you are playing a healer though you can also just spam dungeons regularly uh, just queue for the highest level dungeon you have access to and uh, get levels that way it's uh, quite efficient actually and since we are about to talk about levels 50 to 61 now is a good time for me to talk about palace of the dead as an alternative method to spamming dungeons with your squadron Experience gained in PUTD scales with your level, up to a cap of roughly 750k per clear, which is very efficient from level 50 to 61. Now, it's better to run PUTD at a level minimum of at least 30, since you won't get your job actions unless you have the Soul Crystal equipped. As a reference, when I ran 3 runs at 3 different levels, here's my experience points. At level 36, I got 170k. At level 50, I got 430k. At level 60, I got 777k. So I wouldn't recommend POTD as a level 20 to 50 method of leveling unless you're running with a pre-made group, as squadron dungeons are still more efficient, assuming you're clearing out a lot of enemies in each run. Okay, folks, let's talk about levels 50 to 61. Welcome to some of the driest and most monotone levels in the leveling journey. By far the most efficient way of getting there is spamming POTD floors 51 to 60 over and over and over again. Great groups, so assuming full plus 99 gear and you know how to play POTD, people like that can finish in a roughly 8 minute time period. The average group you're most likely going to get when you match with random people is 10 to 12 minutes in my experience, and if you get unlucky with a full healer group, or you just have inexperienced players, this can take up to 15 minutes or more. There's also a bit of RNG involved. You might get some bad pomanders, you might get some bad floor layouts, so um, your mileage may vary here. I tend to get some pretty good, uh, pretty good leveling groups in POTD, so my average clear is around 10 minutes, which makes this very efficient for me. 
Unfortunately, my friends, I cannot recommend anything else in the level range of 50 to 61. There isn't much to do, unfortunately. Daily or weekly hunts aren't worth doing until 60 plus, which we'll talk about in a while. Beast tribe quests, they tend to not give a lot of experience, and some of them, especially the Vanu Vanu ones, can take ages. And it's recommended you do your daily roulettes here. This is definitely a good spot to start doing them in, because you'll get much more experience than uh, suffering through anything else. Now, the only other method you really have available to you is, you guessed it, spamming regular dungeons with regular people. Of course, as mentioned before, this is a pain in the ass to do if you're a DPS player. It's fine as a tank and as a healer, as queue times are much shorter. So to recap, from levels 50 onwards, ideally until level 61, you want to spam Palace of the Dead. If you can't spam Palace of the Dead, you can just go to regular dungeons, but Palace of the Dead will be more efficient. Given average run times, you can do four, maybe five runs an hour, which will give you quite a bit of experience, so it won't take you too long. I hope. May the queue times be in your favor, and may you get some good parties to help you out. Now, before I talk about level 61 to 70, let me talk about two important announcements. Number one, do not forget to do your Wondrous Tale every week. Not only do you get to see one of the best NPCs in the game, Chloe, you also get a fat chunk of guaranteed experience points. The experience is granted to the job you have equipped at the time you hand the journal over. So you get a new level 80 job, you speedrun the duties you're assigned to, and then go back to the job you're leveling when you hand the book to Chloe. Getting a single line is almost guaranteed, and if you get all 9 stickers you might even get 2 or 3 lines if you're lucky, and these can translate to really big MGP rewards mounts, or even minions. The second part of this announcement is even more important. You should be watching me live stream at twitch.tv slash alzahard, as I'm currently losing enough brain cells to slowly but surely qualify as a battle mentor. I'm currently farming Shadowbringer mounts, and it took me 84 runs to get the Ruby Gwibber, so I'm not going to run out of content anytime soon. I'm also progging through my first ultimate, which is a pain oh. in the ass, and I'll be leveling my alt jobs there, doing exactly what I'm describing in this video. So if you have any questions, or you want to just come talk about the game, I'd be more than happy to have you. But to be honest, most of my friends just watch me to watch me suffer. So, um, yeah, see you there. Now, my friends, let's talk about level 61 to 71. First of all, congratulations for making it this far. You've reached the absolute worst part of the leveling process. If this were the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you'll have reached Infinity War. Not quite the end game, but we're getting there. To me, this level of rage is by far the absolutely worst part of the leveling process. It is dry, it is boring, and it feels very slow. Some people say that 51 to 61 is slower, but to me, this one just feels more painful. The first point I have to make, do not do your beast trap quests unless you're also farming reputation. At max reputation, with all of the beast tribes, I was getting around 250k experience per beast trap quests. So if you do three of them per tribe, that's 750k experience, which is already roughly just one Palace of the Dead run, and you're probably going to go faster through there. So unless you need the uh, reputation, I wouldn't bother with them. Now, if you didn't like running Palace of the Dead over and over in the last 10 levels, then I have some bad news for you. So strap yourself in and get ready to cry, because the most efficient way to get from 61 to 71 is to spam Heaven on High. What is Heaven on High? Well, it's just like Palace of the Dead, but easier. You're going to be spamming floors 21 to 30 over and over again until you reach level 71. So yes, this does mean you have to first reach floor 30 once so you can unlock these floors to do over and over. If you've never done Heaven on High, well, now's a good time. The same rules apply in here as inside POTD, with the potential to go even faster through the 10 floors. There is a type of pomander called the Magicide inside Heaven on High, it's a new addition, and getting one and activating it will kill every single enemy on the floor for you, meaning you, you and your team can just go straight to the exit. These only drop from silver chests, so I recommend you take the time to open all the silver chests along the way, because a single one of these Magicides can speed up a run by 10%. Now a question you might have is, why is it more efficient to spam Heaven on High rather than just doing regular dungeons? Well, aside from the obvious queue uh, issue that we've also discussed for Palace of the Dead as a DPS player, um, 
dungeons in Stormblood will take quite a bit longer than dungeons did in Heaven's Ward and A Realm Reborn. So you can have a dungeon that can take you 20 minutes or more in some cases. And uh, the run I just finished for Heaven on High on my screen took 12 minutes as you see. So this is quite a bit more time efficient and more consistent in how long you take to get through it. Unlike the previous leveling ranges, you have a little something to break up the monotony of the leveling grind. The daily and weekly hunts are now becoming more valuable, especially from Stormblood onwards. I recommend you do these while you're waiting in queue for Heaven on High, or if you just need to do something else for, for a while, or if you're waiting in queue for Duty Roulette. Um, these are normally quite easy to do, especially the daily marks have really easily found enemies and monsters to kill. At level 61, at least for the Stormblood ones, the uh, cap seems to be around 115 experience points per mark, which comes to roughly 575,000 per stack, or 1.75 million for the whole thing per day. Which is pretty nice, especially in the early level 60 range. Now I have nothing else to really say about level 61 to 71, except I recommend you do this with friends and you take your time, because you don't want to burn out doing this on your own, and it can be quite tedious. I think you can also see why I dislike this leveling range the most, because you don't have a lot of options, and uh, it's quite a bit slower than the previous ranges. However, if you've gotten this far, you are now approaching level 71, and are in the last stretch, you're on the way home. And at this point, I don't think your level boost is active anymore, your armory boost that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So now it's just you, and the grind. The fastest way to get from level 71 to 80, at least in my experience, especially with recent patches, with changes made in 5.45 and 5.5, is the Bosjan Southern Front. You can enter Bosja from level 71 onwards and you'll notice that all your skills are unlocked all the way to level 80 immediately, which is great, so you can already practice your endgame rotation as you're still leveling. The majority of your experience inside Bosja will come from three sources. Number one are skirmishes. Number two are critical engagements, and number three is Castrum Lacos de Torre. All three of these sources of experience were buffed quite a bit in patches 5.5, and I believe the previous patches before that as well. Skirmishes in particular now give enemies a debuff called Hubris if the amount of players in the skirmish is below the recommended amount, which makes them much easier to kill, to a point where it's possible to solo skirmishes on your own now. Critical engagements, on the other hand, will now provide the echo to players, particularly when there are fewer players available, and the buff gets stronger the fewer players there are, which makes the, uh, the engagements much easier to clear in a small party as well. And last but not the least, the rewards you get from Lacus Torre have been buffed significantly. For reference, at level 77 I was getting 5.5 million experience points per clear, at level 79 I was getting close to 6.1 million experience points per clear, which is quite a lot for what is essentially a glorified alliance raid and has gotten quite easy to run. Now of course I'd recommend that if you're gonna play boss Jai, you don't go in there blindly and you do a bit of preparation. It is at this point where I would recommend that you make sure you have the Bosjan earrings, which are an item that you get from appraising 1000 lost fragments. Personally, I probably appraised 100, maybe 200 before I got tired and went to the market board and bought around 800 of the cheapest ones I could find on my data center. And I just appraised those uh, in one big swoop. And this ended up costing me roughly, I think half a million, maybe 600,000 gil. But uh, the 10% experience boost that the earrings provide while you're inside Bosja is massive. So I highly recommend you get those because uh, they're worth the investment. The optimal strategy in Bosja is quite simple. Look out on the map for the highest level skirmish that you have access to. If it's outside of your area, obviously you can't go. But the ones you can get to, make sure you run there as quickly as you can. Participate in the skirmish, and if you're in the skirmish for long enough and you contribute enough, you should be getting close to a million experience points or more per skirmish, which is quite significant because these pop up all the time, all over the place. The second a critical engagement pops, join it. Uh, whether you're as a party or as an individual, since they've made all these changes to them, it's highly recommended you join them as much as you can. The experience gain is significant. On my screen you just saw me get over 2 million experience points from a very simple uh, low rank critical engagement. 
One thing to keep in mind with the most recent patch is the fact that every time a critical engagement or a skirmish is cleared, the amount of time until the next Lacus Vittori is spawned is reduced quite a bit. So these should be popping up more frequently now. And also, if you have enough clusters, you can purchase a, uh, a riding map to increase your mount speed and make it easier to get from skirmish to skirmish. So uh, yeah, Bosja is the place to be. Best place to level, 71 to 80. There are other benefits too. You can get some interesting glams and interesting uh, mount drops and other rewards from the lockboxes and from a, the uh, the currencies you can trade. Uh, you also get to unlock uh, the Lubrum Regine, which you need for your relic weapon, and you require Bosja for the relic weapon anyway. There are more Bosja areas being added to the game soon, so now is a great time to reach level 15 in the metal and uh, preparing for the next patch. Um, I know why a lot of people don't like Bosja, I understand why, but a lot of the changes they've made recently make it much more attractive during off-peak hours, and you're no longer required to play with, uh, you know, with an instance full of people, and uh, some of the fates uh, are now much easier to do on your own. I do enjoy Bosja quite a bit, and uh, I understand if you don't, but uh, you do have one other thing you can do every day to chunk out a bit more experience per level. And that is actually, for the first time, I get to recommend the Beast Tribe quests. The Beast Tribe quests given to you by the Pixies in Lyda Loran are some of the easiest ones in the game. They're honestly quite brain dead and all you gotta do is find a Pixie or uh, run to an NPC or say something in all chat. It's, uh, it's quite simple and... Um, it's very fast. Depending on your level, this can squeak out between 6.5 to 7.5 million experience, which is roughly two to three critical engagements inside Bosja or a couple of skirmishes. So uh, for the time spent, which is normally five minutes for me, uh, this is worth doing. So there you have it. These are the fastest ways to get from 71 to 80, combining the Bosja grind with the daily Beast Tribe quests from the Pixies is, uh, at least to me, the fastest way. Now, some, some of my friends have asked me about using the trust system, which is when you play uh, Shadowbringer Dungeons with MSQ NPCs. And while the system is great in concept, I find its execution lacking. The AI system is pretty weak. Oftentimes, you have to adapt to the way they handle mechanics and boss fights. And let's face it, a Shadowbringer Dungeons can take up to 20 minutes, especially when you have to deal with you know the fact that you're... Uh, your Thancred tank cannot wall-to-wall -wall anywhere nearly as quickly as a real tank could. And uh, boss just is simply faster. That's all there is to it. And that's all from me for today. Thank you for watching this unnecessarily long video. I tried keeping it short, but as is my nature, I just kept talking and talking. I just had too many things to say, I suppose. This is my first time doing a YouTube video of this length or doing anything like this, so um, this took me much longer than I thought it would. If you have any feedback on the video, please leave it in the comments below. If you'd like to see more content from me, please click subscribe. I'll be putting out more stuff in the near future. Um, less scripted and I guess more concise type of videos are on my to-do list. If you'd like to watch me stream and suffer through my Ucob prog or just have fun with my friends, you can interact with me at twitch.tv slash alzahard or you can follow me on social media, which I have nothing on currently at the moment, but uh, I will in the future. Um, I hope this is helpful for you. If it wasn't, do let me know and any feedback is appreciated. See you guys soon. Al out.